During your time viewing videos from the infographic show, you may have come across some of the worst punishments humans have ever devised. Torture has been used throughout history to punish criminals, make enemies talk, or just for fun by insane despots. But what if you were sentenced to death using a form of punishment that was quick, watched by thousands, and even may have made you a household name? We're talking about the guillotine. Join us as we explore the gruesome and fascinating machine that was the favored form of punishment in France for nearly 200 years. And whether you agree with this form of punishment or not, just try not to lose your head and keep calm. The guillotine is probably best known for its work during the French Revolution. It struck fear into the hearts of the innocent and guilty citizens across France, and it was a time of unrest and those sentenced to death rarely had trials. But beheading and even beheading machines were not new to the world at the time of the French Revolution. Beheading as a punishment happened throughout history and across the world. It can be traced back to ancient Greek and Roman times. However, beheading wasn't for everyone. It started out as an honorable death that was reserved for nobles and persons of importance. If you were someone of lower status, you were most likely going to be getting the axe as your beheading device. But those with real prestige were decapitated by a sword. You had to be really important to get the sword. Either way, the result was the same. Beheading was not just a Eurocentric punishment either. Seppuku, which is a ritual decapitation by samurai sword, was practiced in Japan from the 15th to the 19th century. Regardless if you were a samurai, Roman soldier, or English crusader, decapitation was always an option as a punishment. In England, beheading gained popularity during medieval times. It was used to execute rival rulers, soldiers, and traitors. But traitors were not high status, so they were not worthy of just your normal beheading. Instead, they were dragged through the streets by horse to the location of their execution, hung within inches of their death, disemboweled, and then finally beheaded. Some traders were lucky enough to have all four limbs tied to a different horse and then torn apart when the horses ran in different directions. Luckily, the trader was already dead when torn apart, most of the time. Before the guillotine became fashionable and sped up the beheading process, there were other machines created to achieve this goal. A machine called the plank was used in Germany during the Middle Ages, and England had a similar device with a sliding axe known as the Halifax gibbet. It would seem that Germany and England both beat France to the cut. Eventually, France moved into the beheading machine business. The idea for the guillotine and its namesake was Dr. Joseph Ignace Guillotin. He was an anatomy professor and politician in Paris when he came up with this famous idea. He lobbied before the National Assembly in 1789 for equality in capital punishment. The idea of equality of life was on the minds of everyone during the French Revolution. Dr. Guillotin just took the discussion one step further to the equality of death. He argued that it was unfair for common criminals to be tortured as capital punishment. While more noble lawbreakers were given swift and quick justice, some wealthy felons could even tip their executioners to make sure they received a quick death. Dr. Guillotin argued that if France was going to be truly egalitarian, then those principles should be extended to capital punishment as well. All criminals, regardless of class, should be beheaded, he declared. His solution was a beheading machine that ensured everyone received a quick and compassionate death. He explained that the mechanism falls like lightning. The head flies off, the blood spurts, and the man no longer exists. As far as punishments go, everyone is going to have the same experience. Joseph Ignace Guillotin may have come up with the idea of using a beheading machine for executions, but he was by no means an inventor or engineer. Instead, a man by the name of Antoine Louis created and built the first beheading machine in France. Louis tested his machine on animals, and when the new contraption could cleanly sever the heads off of sheep and calves, he moved to human trials. First, Louis tested his beheading machine on the corpses of dead women and children and was largely successful. However, with dead human male necks, the cuts never seemed clean, and this prompted Louis to go through several redesign phases. To overcome the annoying obstacles of thicker necks and denser bones of males, Louis increased the height from which the blade dropped, and the blade was redesigned into a sloping, triangular shape. This did the trick, and Louis' machine could now sever the head of a fully grown male corpse with accuracy and ease. It is amazing what you can do when you've got a good head on your shoulders. The machine that Louis made was originally named after its creator. The name Louison or Louisette did not stick, however. After people associated the machine with the great doctor who came up with the idea of equality for punishment and execution. Much to the lament of Dr. Joseph Ignace Guilton, the beheading machine was renamed the guillotine. But the French people also took to calling the machine the widow and the national razor. 
The guillotine design was simple yet effective. It consisted of two upright wooden beams with a crossbeam at the top, which the rope the blade was connected to was attached. Heavy weights were placed on the back side of the blade to ensure the blade picked up enough speed to cut cleanly through the neck of the guillotine's victims. The first victim of the device was Nicolas Jacques Pelletier, who was executed in 1792. He was a criminal who had been sentenced to death for robbing and murdering Parisian citizens. A guillotine was erected in Place de Grève outside of Hotel de Ville in Paris. Pelletier was paraded into the plaza and walked onto the platform where an enthusiastic and interested crowd awaited his execution. Imagine for a moment you are in the crowd just waiting around to see the next public execution. Instead of your usual gallows, a 14-foot high wooden machine with a razor-sharp blade hanging from its top sits in the middle of the plaza. What the heck's that? You might be asking the person next to you. But no one knows because it's the first time a contraption like this has been used in France. You watch as the scoundrel Nicolas Jacques Pelletier is walked up to the platform and secured so his head rests at the base of the wooden tower of death. Then the executioner approaches. Instead of wielding an axe or a sword, he walks empty-handed over to a lever. He pauses for a moment and then pulls. The shining blade falls like lightning and cuts straight through the criminal's neck. Peltier's decapitated head falls into a wicker basket as hired hands throw sawdust onto the blood-covered wooden boards. The crowd erupts in applause. The guillotine had caught on as the main form of execution for all convicted felons in the country of France. More devices were built and capital punishment by guillotine became almost as popular as egalitarianism during the French Revolution. At dinner parties, people had model guillotines in their parlors with decapitated effigies of enemies and politicians. For holidays and birthdays, children received toy guillotines to decapitate their dolls or mice they caught running around the house. Poets and songwriters began to write and sing about the wonderful machine that was bringing swift justice to all who were condemned. At all of the public executions, vendors were selling souvenirs to commemorate the time families spent together watching the executions by the famed guillotine. If you planned right or knew someone important, you could even get a spot at a nearby restaurant called Cabaret de la Guillotine. Some people even attended the guillotine executions on a daily basis. It was reported that a group of somber taboo women called the Tricoteuse would sit on the scaffold and knit socks, hats, and scarves between beheadings. Even those being executed joined in the excitement. There were accounts of people walking to their death making sarcastic jokes and dancing their way up the steps to the guillotine. Not only were the executions by guillotine popular and widely attended, but the guillotine operators were revered as celebrities. During the French Revolution, guillotine operators were judged by fans on how quickly and precisely they could behead their victims. The more beheadings, the more admired the executioner was in the hearts of onlookers. The guillotine executioner profession became a family affair, such as with the Sanson family. Fathers and sons served as state executioners for multiple generations and were responsible for decapitating King Louis XVI and Marie Antoinette. Between the 1790s and the 1840s, the family was responsible for decapitating thousands of individuals using the guillotine and could go almost as quick as a beheading a minute. It was said that the names of executioners were chanted for all to hear, and the clothing of executioners inspired the latest fashion trends across France. It was rumored over the centuries that when the head was cut off a victim, it was still conscious and could even move and speak. There is some truth to these claims, but not much. The brain uses around 20% of all oxygen taken in by a human body. Once oxygen stops being supplied to the brain, such as when the head is separated from the heart and lungs, the brain shuts down. However, there's a small window of time where oxygen and blood that's present in the brain can still be used. The rumors of decapitated heads still being conscious gained public attention when in 1793 an executioner's assistant slapped the face of the decapitated head of Charlotte Corday. She was charged and sentenced to execution for the murder of her husband. The onlookers claimed to see her cheeks flush and turn red with anger. This story led doctors and enthusiasts to ask decapitated heads to blink, speak, or show signs of consciousness. Spoiler alert, no severed heads showed any sign of consciousness. The experiments with decapitated heads were put to a stop in the 20th century. However, studies on rats found that brain activity in a decapitated head may continue for up to four seconds after the head is separated from the body. Much to the dismay of guillotine enthusiasts, all things must come to an end. Slowly, capital punishment dwindled during the 20th century. However, there was a brief resurgence of the guillotine during the Nazi regime. During the 1930s, 20 guillotines were ordered to be placed in cities across Germany. According to Nazi records, the guillotines were used to execute over 16,000 people between 1933 and 1945. After World War II, the guillotine was still used in France until 1977 for capital punishment. The last person to be executed by the guillotine was a convicted murderer named Amida Jandubi. 
A few years later, in 1981, France abolished capital punishment altogether. Before his death, Guillotin became incredibly distraught with how the device he had envisioned and helped create became a symbol of death and terror across Europe. Guillotin tried to disassociate his name from the beheading machine, and his family petitioned the French government to change its name, but neither were successful. There are many forms of torture and punishment more painful than the guillotine, but few can claim such swift and numerous deaths as the National Razor. The guillotine struck fear, awe, and excitement into the hearts of the people during and after the French Revolution. No other form of capital punishment was met with such pomp and circumstance as the guillotine. People tended to lose their minds over guillotine executions. Just remember, if you ever find yourself at the wrong end of a guillotine, you may still have four seconds to make a face before your decapitated head loses consciousness. If you've lost your head over this video, then why not check out another awesome fit from your favorite YouTube channel and click this video over here, or perhaps you'd prefer this one here instead. Either way, click one, cause with the infographic show, you just can't lose.